This is Alex Steele, blacksmith, uh, YouTuber. You make all sorts of stuff. Um, I brought some cameras, we're gonna make a thing. I don't really know what's gonna happen now. Well, we're gonna make a bottle opener. Yep. But what we're also gonna do is we are going to make the tools that we need to make the bottle opener. Right. Because that's one of the special things about blacksmithing, is the blacksmith was one of the only craftsmen that literally could make pretty much all the tools in his workshop to make all the items that somebody would actually want to buy from him. Huh. It's, it's relatively basic. I think right. it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Okay. There's a lot it to is learn. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done anything like this. I don't even know where to start. So we're going to get the forge lit. I'm going to tell you how to hopefully not burn yourself. Yep. And then we're going to start forging a point for the drift that you're going to make while I make a punch. Right. And they're needed to make ourselves this beverage opening device. What's a drift? <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for moving the camera out just in time there. Wow. So these are the tools that we're gonna be making. All right, okay. This is a slot punch. Yeah. It makes a hole that is shaped like a slot. All right, yep. This is a drift, and the profile of this means that you take a rectangular slot, mm -hmm. and you push it through the material, and then you gradually enlarge it into a round hole. Okay. So a punch makes the hole, a yep. drift drifts or enlarges it open. All right. Yep. For us to make both of these, yep. we're going to need to do one of the most critical and key parts of blacksmithing, which is forging a taper or a point. Right. So it's changing the cross section of the material by displacing it, and making it thinner as we go. So that's a taper. Yep. And what will happen is, is we'll start with a bar that looks like this, and all of that material right there is going to be shoved out there like Play-Doh. Okay. Forging is that. It is displacing right. this plastic material. Yep. So I'm going to demonstrate each heat, and then you'll do the same. Okay. Oh, sorry. A heat is every um, instance of taking the material out to the anvil. Uh-huh. Every time that comes out to the anvil, we are taking a heat. Here we go. So. Yep. Like I said, about a 30 degree angle here. Yep. You're going to tilt your hammer over, straight up and down, hit the tip. Right. Give it a good whack. Aim the center of your hammer at the center of the bar. Every time I hit, my left hand here yep. is rotating the bar with my fingers like this. My right. index finger comes around. Yep. And every time it turns around, we lock it in at 90 degrees and hit it again. Okay. And we start to make a point. We start to make a point. Yes, we do. Okay. So, just take this. Okay, Yep. Good it's to cold. go. So, take that. Put it there. A little further that way, just because. Further. Yep. And then you're going to come back onto the anvil some more. Lift yep. up. Up, 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 up. Perfect. And right there, hit the end of the bar. Brilliant. So, now stop for a second. Bend your knees a little bit and get that hammer up high and then really... I'm more worried I'm going to miss the damn thing. Don't worry. I know the guy that makes the anvils. <laughs> you can always make another. Oh, I know my form is terrible, but... That's okay. I'm tapping I'm gonna the, try and, the thing at this point. I'm going to try and give you some feedback on it for the next heat. So, let me put this Missed. camera... Let me Completely put, missed. If, if, if you're happy for me to kind of manipulate your yep. position a little bit. Yep, go for it. Um, that's still cold. Bring your hand closer to my hand. Yep. And then drop that shoulder some, so you can relax a little bit like that. As you come with your hammer right here, there's a really big gap between your elbow and your body. Right. I'd like to close that up. So if you can bring your body in a little closer to the anvil like this, yep. and scrunch down a little bit more, mm -hmm. You want to think about having that elbow in just a little tighter as you hit. And everything closer in means that you have a, a, a smaller moment arm, and so you've got a little more power. So it's better to be All close right. in when you're hitting the hammer. And then now lift that hammer up like you want to take a swing. Yeah. It's pretty good. There we go. Perfect. And that'll be more like it. That hammer wants to come quite close to your head. Yes, it does. I'm not sure how I feel about that. There we go. That's that's much more like. And next heat, it'll be a much more fluid right, operation so for you. So this goes back in. Yep, straight back in the fire. The idea of hitting with any precision is uh, still there. We go. All right. Lift up with your left hand. That's perfect. 
And keep that, even though you're tilting it, keep the hammer close to your head. There we go. We've already got more force on the blows. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little more confident, which is probably going to backfire on me. No, no, it won't. Nothing bad will happen from hitting too hard. <laughs> Let's take another heat. The hotter it is, the easier it moves. Do I get a montage now? I feel like I get a montage. You want now. a montage? Yeah, let's do a montage. Okay, I'll make you a montage. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. And can I say, you are swinging that hammer probably 20 times as hard as you were in the first heat. You've yeah. got so much more speed out of that hammer swing. It's incredible, Tom. Oh, the steel tells you when it's I'm right. I'm quite happy with that now. It's looking fantastic. That was wonky, mate. It's still slightly wonky, but I'm a lot happier with that. Well, you take a couple of minutes break. Yep. I am gonna get my punch moving forwards. Yep, okay. Hundred and eighty degrees and we'll turn it over. You make it look so easy. I do not have a respectful response to that. <laughs> No, I just suspect that a lot of people are going to be looking at that and going, oh yeah, all you have to do is put the thing on there and hit it and turn it to hit it. How hard can it? It's very hard is the answer. It is extremely difficult. There we go. And it wouldn't be the same if I didn't touch mark it. Oh, right. This end of the punch is finished. With your cut. logo on it. Sorry, yes. With your logo on it. Got my logo on it. I wish I had letter stamps. We could stamp your name oh, onto the other never one. Mind. But I'm now going to heat it up, cut it off, yep. and then we can get back onto your drift. Okay. Hundred and eighty degrees. Perfect. There we go. All the way up to the tip and hit a little more at the tip. I want to make it more like a screwdriver tip. That's it. Watch out, it's just a little bit twisted over to here. There we go. So as you start to hit that anvil with the hammer, mm -hmm. you want to bring that tip up close to this far edge. Very good. That looks straight to me. I think that that is perfect. Well done, Tom. It's, it's a long way from perfect, but I'll take that, thank you. That makes me very happy. Next step is we are going to put the hot cut in the hardy hole, and you are going to cut it off. Right, okay. <laughs> I've just realized there is a non-zero chance that if I miss, I do hit myself in the balls. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Because I keep doing that, it keeps kind of, because my, my arm's getting tired. Have you ever seen that video of me on the internet? It's probably I think you're going to need to be more specific than that. Mate. There's a video of me getting hit in the nuts with a sledgehammer <laughs> by myself. Yeah, I'll, I, I'll show it to you. I just had this realization that if I if I miss this, there is a there's a trajectory. The there. very real possibility of some some swear words on on uh, Tom Scott Plus. Okay, and now as it's getting thin, don't hit quite as hard. Get a little bit lighter. I'm gonna need a small hammer. Arm and wrist are not up to that anymore. It gets, does get a little tiring. And then stop. Oh. <laughs> you said stop, and I was halfway through the... <laughs> nearly there. Well done. We have ourselves... Ah, it's under there. A punch. Hey. I mean, a drift. A drift. I said it the is, wrong word. It's not the best one in the world, but I made that. Time for us to start work on the bottle openers. We are now on to making the actual bottle opener. We've had lunch. I'll let you do the honors again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> go. Oh, hang on, that, didn't, that did not. Uh oh. There yeah, ready and go. 
<laughs> I felt that. Oh, I got in about a second too late there, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, it got a little bit off the... Little, oh uh, no, a little skin. I have actually lost a little bit of hair there. Yeah. That's fine, I don't really want it. <laughs> yeah, uh, who wants hair on the back of their fingers? Okie dokie, so here's how it's going to go. Right. You're going to take it out. Now, if you see me put this punch down, yep. there is a distance from this edge of the punch to that edge of the steel. Yes. Of approximately here, seven millimeters or so. Right. You want a similar distance from the end of the punch that is now touching the steel yep. to the end of the bar. Okay. So you want a... I would interpret that as having the same margin on all sides. That is an utterly brilliant and right. clear way okay. of explaining it. Okay, and then you're going to hold it, and yep. without moving, that's the difficult part, you're going to give it a light hit. Okay. And now what you're going to do is you're going to examine the result of your work and decide if you're happy with its location. Yeah. Because if you're happy with its location, it's a simple, fa simple matter of feeling the tactile feedback of being inside the groove yep. and hitting again. And if you don't like it, feel for where it is and make the necessary adjustment and hit it again. Yep. I go all the way down to the bottom. Yep. You're going to feel, whoa, it bounces back way yep. more. You flip it over, you hit the back, and you see a bullseye is developing. Yes. There's like a clear indication, oh, there's the other side of your hole, because that's the most recent place to get hit. Yep, I see it. So then what you'll do is you line your tool straight on top of that bullseye. Yep. And if it's straight on top, and you give it a really hard whack, what you'll start to see yeah. is that's that a hole. you have a hole developing with a tiny little plug yep. about to fall out. And with a couple of hits, that usually, there we there go. It, goes. it drops right onto the anvil surface. Wait, hang on a second. Let's um, remove the punch, give it a harder hit on the back side. Uh, once more. Now come into the first side, and I want you to give it one more hit on the punch. Now you see it's not hitting. You're about to get an unsightly experience yeah, yeah, if you hit that. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that. So what you need to do is you either need to pick pick yourself up onto your tiptoes. Yep, there we go. Or remove the punch and hammer it with your hand. I'll, uh, I'll tiptoe it. This could get painful. Yeah, that's fine. Good. That'll do. Let me quickly take the punch to cool it while you flip it yep. over. And then right. now try and line it up and get your marks set. Yep. Not convinced by Ah, you Shake it off like that. Yep. I got it. Ooh. See, what I did there was I grabbed the hot thing. What did I say about grabbing the hot thing? It said, don't grab the hot thing. Fortunately, I was wearing a glove. <laughs> I'm very glad you're wearing a glove. Um, right, so I'm going to grab this by the back here. Yeah, it's quite a logistical problem, isn't it? It is. And I'm just going to run this under some cold water for safety. I'll take it out just so I'll we don't have to it. It wasn't, the, uh, wasn't the initial thing that got me. It was the, how do I get this glove off? This glove is now very hot. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because at first you smell the glove is burning. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the glove heats up rather fast. Yes. And there's a delay yes, to it. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it is a little bit red, isn't it? Yeah, I'll have a little bit of a blister there. I'll be fine. Right, so, uh, yeah, pretty sure that's a first degree burn. That's going to sting for a while. Fortunately, it's not the bit of my thumb that I used to hit the space bar, so that's fine. Give it a good solid single blows. How do you define single? That was close. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant like... Okay, I didn't know you meant... <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I uh, very nearly whacked my wrist with that as well. That slipped on the last Golly, one. I, did, I'm, <laughs> I really hoped building a bottle opener would be a good safe decision. Yeah, yeah, so it does. It turns out we're really, we're really risking everything here. Um, so to get that out, yep. uh, it's, uh, what I'd actually like you to do is flip it over and go over this square hole. And that now, wasn't even hot. I just flinched as I realized what I was and doing. And now, before you put that punch in, I'd like you to use your drift. Ah, OK. That felt better. Good. Oh, hello. Here we go. I'll do it. I'll do this. Watch out. Put your hand. There we go. Okay. Flip it over. That. So the plug is a little bit caught up. It is. So you'll just flip it over and now, pink, pink. So like that. 
Uh, yeah, actually, that would do it. Ta-da! Hey! We've done it. Oh, All right. Yeah, that we was just have finickety. A thing with a hole in it. Well Lovely. Done. Back in? Uh, no, I'm going to put mine in. Of course. What we're now going to do is we're going to drift the hole open. So, again, hold it between your legs. Yep. You're going in the rear side of the hole. Yep. You put it in the middle and you start driving and then you put your left hand on the bar again. Hopefully without burning yourself. Yep. And you kind of move it side to side in the hole as you go. When you start getting a really big black ring around it, just stop and then we'll just hammer the punch out. Okay. Like and then flatten off our material. Right. Beautiful. There we go. Much more secure. That's about as far as that's going to go right now, I think. As they say in Texas, yeehaw! <laughs> Next step. Is we need to make the hole uh, maybe five or six millimeters larger. Right, okay. But we're not going to drift it larger. What we're actually going to do is forge it larger by using the horn of the anvil and hammering around this loop. Oh. So we're going to stretch it out like it was okay. plasticine between fingers. All right, so it's going on this bit just here. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, well, that bit just there, yep. It'll go like this. Bang, 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 bang. Right. So as you come up to this shoulder, you've got to be a little careful about the edge of your hammer. But again, hammer all the way around. As you come to the bottom, your grip's going to have to change yep. like this. And you're going to get your arm a little bit close. If you want to get it further away, just step like this. And you then come up, now hitting with your hammer in this direction. So you okay. notice I started hammer hitting like this. Yep. As I come down and I change my position, I hit like this. OK. That's not meant to be easy to understand. It's not. It, There's it's... a hell of a lot of moving parts. Yep. But uh, it'll do. That looks All fantastic. Right. Last one. About there. Sounds That's good. Right to me. Hit and check. Not hard enough. No, a little bit harder. Hit and check. And hit and check. And hit and check. And you know what? It's not popping out. More heat. More heat. And harder hits. That there. Put that there. Whacking great hit with this. Yes! One more. That'll Perfect. do it. Perfect. So it. now, while it's hot, give it a good brush. Yep. Nice aggressive brush. I'd push away, it's get a little more force. There we go. Oh, you do. All right. Now all we got to do is cut it off. Okay. <laughs> Just rage hammering. Let's take another heat. One more heat. I, I kind of have a theory that it doesn't require that much muscle mass and that much muscle development, more muscle memory in terms of the technique. So it can be quite a quick progression from it being incredibly tiring to it being not tiring at all. Stop. Oh, oh. 
It's amazing how I knew that that was the time to stop. You did. Perfect. Right. So let's heat it up and uh, we'll get our yep. fabulous end huh. shot. Ready, and three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times you put something in that's yeah. red hot in a bucket of water, it's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also got to remember this is still hot. This is still Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We did it. I've made a thing. You made two things. <laughs> I did, yes. I mean, you you have done a bit of polish on both of these, let's be honest. That, that was not tapered off at the end. It's, it's, it's a little bit strange than it was, but this, this bit here, that's all me. I'm, I'm really happy about it. Good, you should be. You should be proud. I think you did a really good job. And I'm very grateful that you came. <laughs> one minor burn, one slight loss of hair, <laughs> quite a lot of dignity lost, because I thought I was stronger than that, but I have a bottle opener. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Alec. Do we have any bottles? Uh, no, actually, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could have prepared that. <laughs>